here at God Amen. Today is the fifth Sunday of the Blessed Month of Tuba. And so, as we know that we read a familiar passage, we read uh, the passage that points us to blessings. And so we read uh, of the great miracle of, of feeding the multitudes. And because God has blessed us this month with an initialism, he has given us an abundance. And today I wanted to focus on verse 11 of today's passage. Our Lord took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise the fish as much as they wanted. One of the first times we hear the word thanks in the liturgy of the faithful is during the, the great Eucharistic prayer, the anaphora, or anaphora, however you pronounce it. The priest, he asks us to lift up our hearts, and we respond by saying, we have them with the Lord. And then he says, let us give thanks to the Lord. And then we respond by saying, it is meet and right, or proper and right. And the priest then continues in this first part of the prayer, emphasizing that it is right to do so when he says, it is meet and right, meet and right, truly indeed is meet and right. So what are we thankful for? If we listen further, we hear that we thank God for bringing us into being. We thank God for our lives and, we, and for God's continued relationship with humanity. This is what we say thanks for. So this God, who is totally beyond our comprehension, we, we say in the liturgy, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible. And he has the power to create out of nothingness is both unknowable and yet able to be known. This is what we give thanks for. Our God reveals himself to us. He wants a relationship with his creation. Even when humanity turned away and turns away, our God does not give up on us. He continues to care for us. God keeps reaching out to us to draw us back into communion with him. So as Christians, we have so much to be thankful for in our lives. We are thankful for the various things and that other people are thankful for, Christian, non-Christian, it doesn't matter. We're thankful for loved ones. We're thankful for friends. We're thankful for our homes. We're thankful for the food on our tables and the many blessings that we have received. But as Christians, we take this level of gratitude to the next level. We amplify it. As Christians, we have a different understanding, a deeper understanding, that we are really blessed beyond our wildest expectations. We are blessed because we are able to be called the sons and daughters, the children of God. That's amazing. If you really stop to think about that, we're blessed with the miracles in our lives. We're blessed with the Orthodox faith. We're blessed with the Orthodox Church to guide us from this life to the next. We're blessed with the healing sacraments of the church, the, the medicine that gives us life and joy. As Christians, we are blessed to have knowledge of God and his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. But more than that, we're blessed to know them through a living relationship. It's not theoretical. As Christians, we are blessed to have communion with the saints. They have lived throughout the ages. And we're not alone. This reminds us that we're not alone. We are together in a community. We are a living church. Both with the people around us, the holy men and women who came before us, and they fought for the faith that has been handed down to us. As Christians, we are thankful to know that God really loves us and this love took flesh and became man and dwelt among us. We're thankful to know that our Lord Jesus Christ truly became man for us. He truly died for us. This really happened. And he really defeated death for us. We're thankful for the reality of the resurrection that is ours because of his love. We're thankful for the forgiveness of our sins. 
We have so many sins. I'm speaking for myself. So many burdens that we carry. Yet, our Lord, in His mercy, has carried them for us, and He has wiped away our sins if we're faithful. We're thankful that we can come here and pray together and receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ together as one body. We're thankful that He loves us so much that He allows us to eat His flesh and to drink His blood in order to unite with us. We're thankful that God has heard our pains and our concerns and He answers us. He has not abandoned anyone or left anyone without His presence if we're faithful. He has always been with us. Today we heard about one of the, the great miracles of the church in the scripture, feeding more than 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. But what did Christ do right before handing out the food to the disciples? He takes the five loaves and the two fish and he looked up to heaven. The tradition of the day was to look at the food when blessing it, but Christ teaches us that before we, we bless it, we need to give thanks first. We have to give thanks for what we have. So who do we thank? We thank God, of course. And this is how our prayer life goes. We sit in silence. We let God enter. We call out to him from the depths of our hearts. Call him Father. And before we say anything or do anything else, we say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for everything that we've had. Everything and everything, always. Thank you, O oh God, for everything that we don't have because we probably would have handled it well. It might not have been for the benefit of our salvation. So I'm okay with that. Thank you. Thank you for depriving me of something that I really wanted, but I know in the big picture it might not have been good for me. Thank you, O oh God, for the things that are yet to come. Even in our liturgy, when we ask God to send down his Holy Spirit and to bless the bread and the wine to make them into the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank God for the things that have already passed and for the things that are yet to come. We give thanks for all the saving actions of Christ, even those that have not happened yet, like the second coming. And in our personal prayer, we also give thanks for the things that are yet to come. I hope we do. Someone once said that our present life is the answer to our prayers. And I thought there are a lot of people who, who have it a lot worse than we do, or at least than I do. It doesn't mean that they've asked for, they've asked for the bad things, like that their prayer was insufficient or bad. And recently I came across an answer. Our faith is not meant to make our lives better or easier. This is a misconception. It's not about how we feel, but who we are. Our faith is meant to change us. Our faith is meant to transform us, to make us more like Christ. And so in this sense, our life is the answer to all of our prayers because we are not meant to have a good life, but we're meant to have a Christ-like life. There's a big difference. All the pain and all the joy of our lives, all the sufferings and all the happiness are meant to transform us from who we are into who we are meant to be. And we are meant to be disciples of Christ and his followers and doers of his will. In St. Paul's letter to the church of Thessalonica, he highlighted, he says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In fact, throughout St. Paul's letters, he really like, encourages his readers more than 50 times to give thanks. Give thanks to God at all times. Keep alert with thanksgiving. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God just to name a few. We give thanks for everything that we have and for the things that will come, 
no matter what they are, good or bad, challenging or joyful. Because if this life that God has given us can teach us anything, it's that we cannot rely on ourselves. But we can only rely on God who saves. When we teach kids to say thank you, it's not a, simply a matter of having good manners. Again, this, this is good that they have good manners, of course. It's a matter of changing their way of thinking and bringing them to a sense of gratitude for everything in their lives. You don't have, you don't have everything in your life because of anything that you have done, but because of the love and the care that others have shown you. And most importantly, because of the love of God. So maintaining a spirit of gratitude and seeing all of life, even its surprises, its struggles, its disappointments, the crises, is an extremely important spiritual discipline. And the reality is it doesn't come easy. It doesn't come naturally even. But it's a discipline that we have to cultivate in our, in our, in our lives. One's, uh, one of the fathers says, one's inability or forgetfulness of expressing gratitude reflects a serious spiritual sickness. When we don't express this spirit of gratitude, we, we reveal our pride. We don't thank others because by thanking them, we kind of have to acknowledge that they have done something special for us. And that's not always easy to accept. And sometimes our pride stops us from thanking God because we don't understand life itself as the most special and precious gift that God has given us. And it's not automatic. It is like many good and holy righteous things. It's a habit, a way of thinking, a way of behaving that must be cultivated and exercised in order to flourish and to grow. So instead of cultivating thanks, sometimes we cultivate the exact opposite, whining and complaining. How many times, how many of us even bother to take time to count our blessings on a daily basis? And if we don't, how will we understand how truly blessed we are? And if we don't think that we're blessed, then we'll always walk around with some sort of entitlement, like somebody owes us something. Oftentimes, we don't think of it this way. We think that ingratitude is, is sinful. It causes us to miss the mark, to fall away from God, not closer to Him. How many of us turn to God when we are in trouble or when we are in need? Yet when all goes well, we forget and we ignore. I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience. When we have a crisis, that is the most prayerful we'll ever be in our lives. We come to church, we pray tizbaha, we, do, we go above and beyond. And then when things go well, we forget. I know I do. And we ignore God. And the longer we dwell in our, in our comfort, in our luxuries, the more that we deceive ourselves into thinking that we deserve everything that we have. I earn this. We may even feel that we have earned our blessings through hard work and a, a great struggle and effort. Sometimes we forget who has given us our health, who has given us our strength, or our intelligence, or even the chance to live in this great country of ours and have these opportunities that are handed to us. How arrogant it is to think that we have succeeded all on our own without the grace and the blessings of God. So we have to learn to thank God daily. We have to thank God for life itself and for whatever life brings. And that's a harsh reality. Ultimately, if we believe that we have a loving Father in heaven who watches over us, 
then we have to realize the same loving Father will be with us in the midst of any and all surprises in life, good and bad. He will walk with us. He will never abandon us. He will help us learn and grow from every and any circumstance, no matter how seemingly difficult and unwanted they are. So we should strive to give thanks in all circumstances. So some concluding thoughts. Having gratitude in your life can unlock many doors. It can change your life. How often do we start our day or end our evenings by thanking God for all the blessings in our life? How often do we list them or contemplate on them in the ways that he has taken care of us? Once you start down that road, everything becomes transformed. Instead of complaining when you don't get your way, we start to think, if God has always provided for me and he loves me, then perhaps he is withholding this thing for my benefit. There's a lesson to be learned. Or we might say, I trust that the Lord will provide for me according to his will. Honestly, when we show gratitude to God, we cannot help but then have that gratitude flow to others around us. And I pray that we are not acting contrary to this through our attitudes and our actions. One of the fathers of the Catholic Church, uh, Father Henry Nowen, he said, and as an important spiritualist, when he said, to be grateful for the good things that happen in our lives is easy, but to be grateful for all of our lives, the good as well as the bad, the moments of joy as well as the moments of sorrow, the successes as well as the failures, the rewards as well as the rejections, that requires hard spiritual work. Still, we are only truly grateful people when we can say thank you to all that has brought us to the present moment. Let us not be afraid to look at everything that has brought us to where we are now and trust that we will soon see it in the guiding hand of the loving God. As I said, gratitude can unlock many doors in your life. It can help us even unlock the doors of salvation. It has been said that everyone capable of thanksgiving is capable of salvation and eternal joy. So let's practice this spiritual rule, this prayer, daily, being in silence in front of God, saying our Father, reciting the prayer of thanksgiving, giving thanks for all things that we have, for the people in our lives, for our faith, and for the things that are yet to come. It's a good spiritual practice that we recite the Thanksgiving prayer daily, and we pause, and we truly reflect from the bottom of our hearts the things that we are truly thankful for. And I would encourage everybody to do this. So let us make gratitude an integral part of our lives and our interactions with others, and glory be to God forever. Amen.